Hello, today I'm going to talk about k-means. k-means is a, an unsupervised machine learning algorithm. So instead of having labels and identifying classes here, we are going to try to find clusters or groups using the features of the data. In, in k-means or in unsupervised learning algorithms, you don't have labels and you are trying to find uh, some structure in the data. And I have already made a video explaining what what is k-means, the algorithm, how, how it works, like how do you get the best k, and so on. So here I am just going to implement here in Python. And I am going to implement it in two ways. The first way is the one that I did by myself. So I'm, I'm doing a, a course, and in this course you have uh, like uh, classes or lectures. And before the lecture, I actually tried to do it by myself. And this is what the th first thing that I'm going to show you here is what I did by myself. And then I'm going to show you what the professor did. So I have two, diff two different things here. The first one I did myself, so you can't trust this as much. <laughs> and the second thing is the one that the version that the professor did. Okay, so let's start. Yeah. This is the first time that we are going to implement a unsupervised learning algorithm in this course. So if you are following for I don't know why, these uh, courses that I have been making, uh, this is the first time that I have been doing. This is the first time that we are going to see the unsupervised learning algorithm. Okay, importing the libraries, it's, it's still the first step. And we still do the same thing. Import NumPy as NP import pandas as pd, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Then we are going to importing, importing the dataset, but in this situation it's going to be a little bit different that, uh, compared to what we have been doing so far. df is going to be the pd.readsv, uh, the name of the dataset is mol, mol something. Um, it's not loading, but I think it's mall customers. I think I am the wrong folder. Yes, I was in the wrong folder, so now I am in the right folder. Okay, so I imported it aside, it's called mall customers. And here instead of uh, splitting it into X and Y, that is going to be afterwards split it again into training set test set. In unsupervised learning we don't have the test set because we don't have anything to test on. Uh, we don't have any like metrics. <laughs> it's, it's harder to to get a good metric to to use on your, on your unsupervised learning algorithm. So we are going to use the whole data set. And that usually happens when you are dealing with unsupervised learning. It may not happen, like you may split it into X and and Y if you actually have labels, but if you have labels you shouldn't be using clustering. Okay. So we only have X. Let's let let's first take a look at our data set. So this is our data set. We have a customer ID, gen genera, <laughs> yeah, age, annual income and is spending score. And this is from a mall, the, the customers from a mall. And we are and the, we are going to try to 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 cluster it. We can get some some other informations. So we have only this one which is a string. Yeah. The annual income is 60,000, the, the mean. Spending is 50, okay. Maybe it's well distributed. Okay, so, and how many, we have two, two, only 200 rows and only these five columns. Okay, so the first time that I implemented it, I used all the columns except the customer, customer ID because that, that can be used to, to anything. 
uh, not to anything, but not to a clustering, because that's not going to help us. We have a different ID to each row, right? So I'm going to select everything, all the rows and all the columns that started from from one, from one, and I'm going to get the values of it. Actually, I'm not going to do like that because to use the my documentation for one hot encoding I actually have to change the data the, I actually have to, to have the data frame changed as well so I'm going to call this data frame the DF original I'm going to create a new data frame which is going to be DF origin, original just with the columns that I want which is I, I lock all the rows and the columns one uh, one onwards. Def, okay, that's good. Then my x is going to be df dot values, and there we go. Okay, now as we know, <laughs> we have to one hot encode this column. We can't use this uh, to into our supervised learning algorithm. So that's the first thing that we are going to do. First thing is then one hot encoding can also call it like encoding categorical features and I have I'm not going to to code the code here because I don't re remember it off the top of my head but that's why I use I created a documentation to help to help me with that situation and I created this code this code was the original code and I change it to be this code, which is more harder to understand, but it does everything that you want without we needing to do anything. That's good. So here, uh, what this is going to do, it's going to encode all the categorical features. And here you pass the columns of your categorical features of your data frame. In our case, Categorical, the categorical column is at index 0 so we just use 0 here and that's it it should work let's try there we go so if now we print x we have our column 1 hot encoded and this this code here already deals with the multicollinearity problem removing one of the the 1 hot encoded columns so we are good to go already. And the problem of multicollinearity is something like one of your columns totally predicts or is totally correlated with another column, and that's what is what would happen if we left if we leave the column female and male here, because if you are not female, you are male, right? So th those two columns would be suffering from the multicollinearity problem and this code deals uh, already deals with that by itself okay and by the way no matter how many feature calls you have it's going to one hot encode them all and it's going to remove one of those columns in each of the one hot encoded column it's a good code not sure if it works for everything because i didn't spend too much time on it but it, it seems to work. <laughs> okay, so we have now encoded, and as we are, we are dealing with a algorithm that uses a distance, k-means use, uses, I think, Euclidean distance. I don't think you can choose any other distance here. But as it deals with distance, we are going to feature scale our data set as well. So feature scaling. And we also have to do that, for example, with KNN, which also uses dit distance. And what else? Maybe with um, support, ve support vector machine, even though maybe it's not necessary. But you got the idea, right? Okay, so in this case, we do have to feature scale it. It's mandatory. So, feature scaling. First, we're going to import from sklearn. Not the preprocessing, we have done this many times already also, right? Import standard scalar. Then we create a standard scalar 
for x to be our standard scalar and then we change our x uh, but if you see this is our x this is already 0 and 1 so we don't have to we don't need to feature scale this value which is the value that was one hot encoded it's already in a good range however you do have to change these other ones here so I'm going to only a one hot encode all the rows all the rows and only the columns one onwards okay that's going to be equals to uh, standard scale that feature transform feature transform uh, itself there we go now our x is feature scaled so if you see the first first value um, it's uh, within a range usually 3 to minus 3 because it's hard to have something above uh, three standards three standard deviations right? okay feature scaling what else? I think we are good to go. Yeah, looks looks good. So let's build our model. Oh, by the way, we have to use the elbow method now. And if you want to know what the elbow method is, check the video that I did explaining k-means. KNN can also use the elbow method, by the way. So, elbow method. I try to remember how to do it. It is okay. So you do have to create models. So I'm going to import from sklearn dot cluster. Import k means, which is the model that we are going to use. Right? Then we'll have our error. We can either call it inertia or wcc wssse. Which, which are the same things if you see a, if you look at the uh, scikit-learn documentation. WSSSE stands for well, I, I don't think I should explain it because I have already explained in the other video, but it stands for um, within set sum of squared of of error within within sum within set sum of squared error something like that. Which is the error? It's a kind of error metric that you can use in clustering. If you want to know more about that, see the video then, the other video that I did. And then we're going to create it as an empty list. Then we're going to use a for loop for k. And range, we are going to create how many models? Let's create 20 models. So 1 from 21. In Python, we will go from 2 to 20, right? And then we are going to create our model. So we are going to are going to call the model k means, and that's going to be k means, and the first it's number of clusters. Number of clusters is going to be k. What else do we have here? Let's set a random state. So that we always get the same thing here. Random state, so let's say random state to be the answer of everything to 42. Okay, good. Next, we can fit, we can fit it in the same line. And then we are going to append to our, our list of errors. The append, we are going to append k means dot the attribute of k-means, which is k-means.inertia, which is that value. Okay. Next, we can plot it. So plt dot plot, and the x color x axis is going to be range from one to twenty-one. The y column is going to be wssse, which is the error. Then we can change some other things like the color to be blue. The color is blue by default, isn't it? Na, 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 na. Color. I think it's blue by default, so I'm going to remove this. And we can use what else? Line. 
style to be dashed. Uh, the marker to be O. So just to show you, this is what we would get without any formatting. It's not so good to see, so I'm going to change it a little bit. Oh, I didn't save it. Uh, so it's line style to be dashed, marker to be a, a circle, marker face color to be uh, red, marker size, hope this is right, marker size to be, I don't know, 10. And I think that's that's good. Okay. Next we can use plt.x label to be what is the x label? K. Plt.y label to be WSSSE. Plt dot title to be we usually use title here to be um WSSSE versus K. Okay. Let's see. Looks good. Let me check if I do the same thing. If I did the same thing before. Yep. Yep. It's quite the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So this is the elbow method, and I uh, I well, I need to select the value which is the one just before the error is, is, uh, starts to change slower <laughs> okay we ha I have to have find the elbow here and it's not so clear where where this elbow is but I would select either this value which is k equals to 4 or this value here which is k equals to six that's up to me let's let's select what maybe maybe this one here k equals to four the previous times I uh, previous time I select the k equals to six so I already know what is going to happen so I'm going to select k equals to four to see what happened oh, the difference good okay so what we are going to do now is to create to, to building the final model let's call it and that's going to be k means equals to k means and the number of clusters is going to be four random states let's still stick with 42 then we are going to fit x to it and then after creating the model I can use dot predict I actually yeah I could do this whole thing in one row so I will show how to do that in one whole row so this could be white bread and this could be fit predict and I think that should return yep yep so this is everything in one row I, I'll comment this out is in one row some people may like prefer this maybe if you if you are programming only to yourself then you can use it but if you are programming to, with other people maybe you should be more verbose and more clear and therefore more clear about what's what's going on so you can also do k means equals k means and number of clusters equals to 4 random states equals to 42 and that's it the next line you can fit it k means you can only simply fit it and in the next one you can get your white bread And you don't get you get the labels you get like this it creates an uh, attribute and the attribute has the labels I think that's it yep okay good 
we're going to get always the same clusters because our render state is set. Next. So this is this is the final this is the end of unsupervised learning. We created the clusters. Okay, we can't uh, evaluate it now without labels. But we can maybe try to understand what's going on, right? So let's let's <laughs> try um, I don't know exploring the results, let's call it. Exploring the created clusters. And to do so I'm going to change the original data set, the F original. I'm going to create a new column calling, called cluster. That column is going to be white bread. Let's take a look. Cool. So this is our labels now, or, or clusters. It's better to call it clusters. So we this three here is saying that every every row that has a three, every row that has the same cluster, is have similar features. Let's see if that's true. <laughs> that's what a uh, supervised machine learning algorithm does, right? Okay, so we can sort it. Dot sort uh, sort values by cluster. Good. So let's just say here what each cluster we think it is, just by looking at it without any major analysis. Cluster zero is looks like the general doesn't matter so much. It does have more female here. Oh, I need to show the whole the whole data set. And there is a code to do that. Let's see if I remember. It's pd dot set something. pd dot set. I will not remember. I'll have to find it here. Oh, I have here it right by my side, which is good. There we go. This code makes the printing. It's going to print all the columns, all the rows. It's not going to truncate it. Good. So we have now all the rows now. And I wonder how many females and males we have. Just curiosity. <laughs> uh, DF original dot uh, gender dot value counts. Okay, we have more female. Okay. What about clusters? They should be the same size. That's a good sign. They are. This one is here is a little bit bigger, but it's fine. Okay. So cluster zero um, looks like middle, not middle aged people, middle aged to older old people, to elder people. Don't know how to be respectful about that. So mid middle aged to to old people and income. It's like a m medium income. Like we can get, uh, we can uh, use a df dot df original describe. So here we can see, for example, that the um, mean age is 38. So these people are above the mean. So they are mean to old. And annual income is the average is 60,000. And these people here are little bit below the average so I will say that they are in the average the spending score this is how much they these people spend I don't know how this was calculated but it's uh, these people the higher the spending score the more the people spend on the uh, at the mall so the spending score here is also medium. Have some exceptions here. Okay. So 
so overall I would say that cluster zero is from middle aged um, middle eight middle to old age medium to high age let's call it and then the income is like medium income and spending score is medium spending score okay what about cluster one cluster one looks like younger people but not so young like middle middle medium age people and yeah middle age people what about the income so the income here we can see that they have well mm, medium to high income right what about the spending score oh it's it's low low spending score right low spending score here like the maximum is 40 apparently and the minimum is one so yeah so here middle medium age medium to high income and low spending score cluster 2 medium age young to medium age maybe no these people here look look younger the cluster 3 so cluster 2 is more mm, to young to middle age and um, the salary salary is a medium salary as well but they <laughs> that's the huge difference they they their spending score is quite high quite quite high okay so about the age middle age young so small to medium age strange yes i know you can say young to middle age also uh, income is medium medium income what's the average 60000 it's more like medium to high income medium to high income and a high spending score clearly okay what about the third cluster which is the last cluster because we have created only four, four clusters the third clusters third cluster is of young people these are young people this is the youngest cluster that we have here what about the salary yeah, it's a small salary low salary this is an exception 19, 19 years old 65 exception but the salary is, is low it's a low salary overall low to medium salary and the spending score is whoa it's from well there's a huge range here but it's from i think over overall overall is a medium score yeah okay so small age um small is small to medium salary small to medium sell income and medium spending score okay so that's what i did i actually created six clusters before and i think that they were more separated than this one because here we find some outliers like this guy here in the middle of this high spending dudes dudes uh but yeah that's what i did so and with this information you can for example say that for these people with uh, 
medium to high age and medium income and medium spending score you can do something about it I don't know maybe there's something more clear that you could do here like this small to medium age medium to high income and high spending score maybe you should focus sending them them advertises um, with expensive products and you know that they are more more likely to buy them and these guys here that have small to medium income but they still spend a little bit you can send them maybe some other products that are not so expensive and for those people with a high income and low spending score you have to do some campaign to attract those clients because they have a high income they could be buying but they are not buying yeah so you know this could give you some insights on how to do your business or how to how to work with your business you can build up some strategies you can build some strategies based on these insights that's what uh, what a supervised machine learning algorithms are meant to do so this is my implementation and now I will show the professor's implementation which is exactly the same thing <laughs> but so this is my let's call it my implementation call my implementation did I type it right yep okay and this is mm, tutors implementation professors impl implementation I think you have to use this in this case yeah okay so exactly the same thing but in his implementation he used only only uh, this column and this column so that he so that he could plot it so yeah so I'm going to use only those two columns so it's the column zero because we have another column here right in the customer ID zero one two three onwards onwards see yeah okay then therefore he didn't need to do fit uh, in, in, to encode the categories he didn't do feature scaling as well not sure why maybe to plot it but you can also revert the, the value to plot it so well but he did use the elbow method elbow method his elbow method was not as pretty <laughs> as mine though he didn't do anything like this uh, and he used only 11 here good and did the then you have to build the model, yep. And he used k equals to 4. Sorry, 5. Yeah, wait, it was 5. So, here, 5. What else? Exploding the created? No, he didn't do anything like that. He then... Uh, created a vis visualization so visualizing the clusters and to do that he created if I can remember he created scatter plots and the first value is X what is X X is X, our X um, variable, this one. So he created five uh, scatter plots in 
only one plot <laughs> because he created five clusters so he created five uh, scatter plots because he wants to show to color each of those each of those um, clusters so that's why he created five five scatter plots so for example x all the rows and only and only let me check which column he used uh, so okay this he used this one for y okay, so we're going to use this one for x so zero here so, uh, uh, all the rows and the column zero for the x axis. Then the Spanish score is all the rows and only the Spanish score column. Let me see. Yeah. So this doesn't help much. <laughs> so he used colors. So here he defined the color to be red. I can define any, any color that I want here. The size to be 100. So the marker size to be larger, the size of the, the dots here. And what else? Oh, okay, so he actually, he also used label here. So, so this is the first cluster, cluster one. Okay, but as we are going to create a scatter for each cluster, here we are going to use only the rows where y pred is equal to zero and here are the columns of the rows that y pred is equal to zero also does that work uh this doesn't look good <laughs> uh did it do something wrong Oh no no that's that's correct because the scale is not yet properly set. Okay. So five of those. One, two, three, four, five. And then every oh, the the clusters the clusters that were have the label one. Here, two, three, four, four, three, two. And we have to so that's what you get, but we have to change the color. You see how it's we are building this? And here it's going to be two. Let's change this color to green. Next one is going to be cyan. This one is going to be magenta or something like that. Magenta. Okay. Cluster three. Cluster four. Cluster five. Good. You can also change the plt.title to be something like clusters of customers plt.x label to be annual income you can see here in, in thousands and plt.y label annual to be Painting score one to one hundred. And PLT dot label to show the labels. Looks like it's not label, it's legend. It's, you have to type it right, legend. There we go. The legend is a little bit over the, the plot, but that doesn't matter. You can fix that, but that doesn't matter much. So you see this it, we can uh, we can see c more clear compared to looking at it as we did here but that's only because in this case we only have two features and then we can plot it in a two, two d plot otherwise like we we wouldn't be able to plot this right we have how many features we have here one two three four four features we had 
but here we can see clearly some things like there are, there is a cluster there's definitely a cluster with people that have a lower income and a low in spending score a cluster with people that has a high spending score and a low income this people here at the middle then we have some people with a high annual income but a lower spending score and these people here with a high spending score and high annual income so with this information you can target better uh, advertisement for for example for these groups for example for these these people here you can't do much they don't spend much and their annual income is not so good not sure what you're going to do with that like this uh, what I'm doing here I think it's more the job of the marketing people right I have to give the insight and then decide what to do with it okay I think that's how it works not sure and the, uh, these people here they have a spending score high and a uh, low annual income and we can try if we are if we are a company that does not care about ethical issues we can try to advertise people uh, things for these people and they are likely to spend money on those things even though they don't have money okay or we can maybe not not advertise it so much and advertise cheap products that they really need it right that's more responsible for this middle range here I'm not sure what to do for this people here uh, high annual income and high spending score this we can target this is this is the best people <laughs> right they are the best people but they are the ones that are more likely to buy and are more likely to spend a lot so these are the people that most help the business and to those people we can use we can use some advertisements that are uh, about expensive products and they are going to spend a lot of money on on that product and that's not a problem because they do have a lot of money and for these people which have a spending score a lower spending score and a high annual income for these people you have to make you have to move them from this region to this region right so you you have to engage you have to make them a more more lo loyal customer somehow so that they get from this place to this place because they are people with a lot of money so you should should do something about that so that they are people with a lot of money and they are going to spend a lot okay okay so that's it that's it for k means is there any th any other thing that i should mention here i should come up with a code a for loop for that let me try to do that i don't know maybe you can look what i'm doing here so i'm going to i'm going to transform this into a for loop so that we don't need this whole this bunch of columns here so plt.scatter like this and it's going to range because I think that this feature here this attribute dot end clusters yeah it shows how many clusters we have and that's exactly the number of plots that we need so here and we have to generalize this somehow this is going to be I that's easy it's also going to be I this is going to be we have to create a list of colors so colors to be red, blue, uh, green, cyan, and magenta. And the size is that okay? Label, label. You can also can also do something about that, right? I'm not sure. Um, let me try a cluster one plus uh, okay it works maybe it's going to work there as well 
let's see. But da 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 I I so here it's going to be colors I easy this one I'm this one I'm not sure not sure if we can do the str I here let's try that that's it right don't I don't know if there's anything else to do yep <laughs> it actually worked good easier than I what I expected. Yeah, and it is the same. Good, good, good. So, yeah, this is K-means. <laughs> and uh, it was nice to implement it here. So, just to sum it up, we imported the libraries, imported the data set, we one-hot encoded the, the gen column, general, general column. We scaled the other columns. We used the elbow method to select the best K. We choose K equals 4, but that's like up to you. We build the model and we analyze the model here a little bit. Then we did the professor's implementation which is just using two features so that you can plot it afterwards. So he first loaded the data then used the elbow method select the number of clusters to be f five which makes sense here. Then build the model and plotted it. And here we can clearly see what's happening. That's good. This is not not usual. Usually your data set's not going to be so as clear as, as this one. This is made up data, right? Okay. That's it. Bye bye.